All right, welcome back YouTube. It's been a couple weeks since I've done some videos. Uh, I have not got a lot of painting done. As you can see, there is some painting going on in the background there. It's a halfway completed unit of uh, open order infantry for, this, for the Persians. Uh, I have another, I actually have another one of these units I need to paint before me and Holy Diver can, pe can play. So needless to say, I'm behind on painting. I'm supposed to be done with painting as we speak. So I'm, I'm two weeks behind on painting. Um, but my goal is I'm going to finish these guys up this weekend, get them completely done, based with shields. Uh, and then I'll do the second unit. And hopefully it only takes me a week or so to do this, that second unit. And then we'll be good to play. Um, but in the meantime, we had a flurry of products come in for the big battle. So... It's pretty much going to be a loot haul video for the month of uh, September slash August here. And up first, we got miniatures. So uh, last, oh God, maybe a couple months ago, I placed an order with Casting Room Miniatures. That's an offshoot of Foundry. Uh, I, ordered, I ordered some miniatures, took forever, and then I got an email saying, Hey, these Persian horse archers you ordered... The molds are trashed. We got to redo them, and it's going to take a long time. So, do you want to sub substitute some stuff out? And I said, yes, I do. Um, so, what I ended up doing was, is I subbed out for a pack of Persian generals, which is right here. Show them off here. They're actually pretty good. Very Steve Sala-esque. So we got a Persian general with his sword out. Persian general with his axe out, all armored. And then my personal favorite here, a Persian general with his long beard and a Corinthian helmet. This almost looks like this could be a mercenary Greek general. Um, is what I'm thinking and he has uh, the scale mail armor there the scale cuirass uh, Then it has three pretty standard horses one of which is half barded So one of which of the horses is half barded With some uh, face armor there. So pretty happy with those um, Those will be for command stands. I'll probably do a command stand of two and then an independent with one and maybe like a dismounted figure. So that's those, that's gonna make up a command stand. I got a uh, female priestess. Okay, so I'm gonna do a really huge intricate base for the Persian, for the Persian, for the great king here. And it's gonna be like 10 figures um, and I got this female priestess set. It has an altar with a goat on it, or a calf. As you can see there, there's the altar. And then it had four figures. You got one, like, swinging some burning incest. Of course, she's topless. We have one holding a cup, also topless. One who has, who acts like she's about ready to sacrifice the animal. Completely nude. And then one who's holding the heart of the animal, also naked. Um, so my goal is this is going to be a slave cup bearer on the on the stand. So I'm going to use this miniature um, to kind of be like his quote unquote booty servant. Um, I might also incorporate this one that's uh, swinging the, ins the you know, the scented incest or whatever you want to call it. She's wearing a more Persian-esque style hat. Um, so that's them. And then he's going to have a bodyguard contingent standing around, which are going to be five of these Persepolis guard guys here. It was a six pack, but five of them have spear hands to hold spears. And they're all more or less the same, like very slight variations there. They are they are technically different. 
the robes and whatnot. But these are like Persepolis type guards that are taken straight off from iconography and Persepolis. Um, the reliefs there. And then this guy's also holding a spear as well with the bow. But then there's one guy who's just standing holding a bow with his hands on his hip. He's actually going to be representing the great king in his chariot. So I'm going to use this uh, figure to represent the great king in the chariot version because this is an Amazon war chariot. And so what I will do is it is a four horse chariot and it came with two figures. This is the driver. She she looks more Etruscan to me. Um, she has that the egg helmet, the Nagao helmet there, similar to a Pilos helmet. Um, I'm gonna use her, and then it also has oh, I just dropped it. It has this figure right here too, which is like a standing war. Let me get her in, in focus here. Like she's standing with a spear. So I probably won't use her, but I will use the charioteer. So he's gonna have a Amazonian charioteer. And it's a, anachronistic, I get it. But uh, I wanna have a little bit of fun with the command, with, with these commands. And so he's gonna have his charioteer be a, be a, what I like to call a big booty hoe. Um, so, and then that's what I'll use this figure for. So right now we're already got a command stand of seven. I'm not done yet. And then I also got the Persian. It was listed as a civilian pack. That's not what it was. This figure is the great king, clearly. He's in armor. He's very ornate. He has a cuirass on. He's holding a spear. Um, he has something else in his hand there. That is the great king. So this is going to be the dismounted great king. And then... It comes with a with a slave or a, a boy cupbearer here. Get it in focus. Gonna use that in addition to the female cup holder there I had. And it also came with these two like female servants. I probably won't use them. They just like look like some old old hags. Um, so I probably won't use them. They'll go in the spares. But then what it does have are these two very royal looking women in fancy clothes with jewelry. And these are going to represent one of his wives on campaign. So I'll probably use one over the other. They're both pretty decorative, so I don't know. I'll just choose whichever one. It might be this one right here. And so that'll represent that. And then I'll have a spare female Persian. Um... And that command stand, as you can see right there, the figures here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's gonna be ten figures on that command stand. So it's gonna be pretty ornate. But you know, the the great king was known for being a flashy, gaudy, you know, type dude. You know, he he was he was known for his displays of wealth, right? So I think it's pretty appropriate to have a pretty, pretty uh, ornate and uh, extravagant command stand for the great king. And so that way that'll give me two versions of a great king. It'll give me one on chariot, which he's typically depicted, especially Darius the second. And then uh, it'll give me one that's kind of dismounted that I can use potentially for earlier earlier great kings or just great kings that I don't want on a chariot, right? Um, and it is a four horse chariot. I've been reading up on the Persian army um, in both pre and post classical eras. And there's a lot of debate apparently from what little sources we have states, you know, I think it's Arian and he states that the Persians used four horse war chariots so the scythe chariots would have been a four horse chariot and then potentially the great king would use a two horse chariot um i'm going to use my great king on a four horse chariot on an unscythed chariot and then i'm going to have the scythe chariots be on four horse chariots not two horse chariots i just feel like 
uh, for an Eastern Persian army, a, a two horse chariot just, just uh, isn't gonna cut it. But that's not all we have. We still got a little bit more loot haul. This is gonna be a longer video, so if you guys aren't into loot hauls, uh, you might not wanna watch it, or you might wanna just fast forward through it here. So because they didn't have my Persian horse archers, I'm like, well, I really want horse archers. I I'm not gonna order 12, 12 mounted figures from somewhere just to get horse archers. I already have this order and I need all the command stuff. So I just went ahead and ordered their mounted women archers and they're gonna be Scythian mercenaries because the Scythians were cited as having women fighting on horseback. And they were known for being horse archers. So I got 12 of these. They had two or three different packs and then I just repeat ordered some and they look very, very Scythian-esque to me. Some of them have bronze helmets, um, which the Scythians were known for using for having very ornate armor and metalwork. Um, so I, I just feel like they'll fit in perfectly as Scythians. And yeah, they're, they're going to be there. Um, it's going to kind of be like this elite uh, Scythian unit. So I have those. I won't, uh, I won't show you all because some of them are repeats. There's a command in there. They did have a command pack, which was nice. Um, this one's holding the banner, or the standard. And it is very Scythian-esque, or even Sarmatian-esque. And the Sarmatians were a Scythian-type people. Um, and they and, and if you look, they're known for having standards. So I think what Casting Room was trying to do was, was go in that direction with them. Um, and then this one's a musician. Not sure how accurate that could be. And then this is the commander here that's in bronze armor there. So I think it's pretty cool. I'll add a little bit of flair to the army. Probably not 100% accurate. I generally shoot to make my armies pretty historically accurate, um, but I am gonna have a little bit of fun with this one and the Greek army too. Um, the Greek army is gonna be very accurate, but there's gonna be some inaccurate add-ons to it. Um, so yeah, so that's the miniatures we acquired this month for the Persian project. Now to move on to terrain. All right, guys, I'm really excited to show you this next one um, for a variety of reasons. Um, because, number one, when I set out to do this project, I just didn't want it to be just run-of-the-mill WAB or Hell Caesar battles. I wanted it to be special. I wanted the terrain to really capture the nature of the games. We're doing Marathon for the first battle here. And Marathon's known for what? Driving the Persians into the sea right that's they, they got routed and that's where they took all their casualties right they were an amphibious force that um that had landed so there was beached boats uh and i want to represent that in the game there is not a lot of option for 156 scale 28 millimeter triremes or even ancient um ancient ships that are just one or two rows of rowers too um single 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 road ships but when we were doing the last live cast with holy diver a viewer recommended tray games and i went home immediately looked them up and i'll be damned they had some pretty decent laser cut trireme kits not out of mdf but out of wood um piqued my interest and it gets even better they were decently priced um, not crazy, nothing crazier than what you could get out of Europe. Hence why I got them because they are in the United States, Minnesota to be exact. So really cool there, um, that I can support an American company. And when I opened the box, not only did the product, the, and it shipped super fast. Um, the packaging was great. Um, not only that, he, uh, he added an extra set of eyes for the ships um, for a little bit of variety for me. Uh, he put a little personalized note in there and said, hey, I thought you might want these when you're painting them up. And I said, and that, and that is a great little touch. And he has, um, and he included some game tokens and bases in there. How cool is this? Um, now, I'm not, we're not using these for a naval game, but yeah, there's, there's some uh, naval, so there's some tokens and a 20 millimeter and 25 square millimeter base in there. So really cool, and a clear base, um, and some gaming tokens in there. 
Now, I'm not using these for any naval games. I'm sure he created these for naval games. Um, I'm using them for terrain, for, for land games. But here's what they look like. This is the kits right here. That's what you get. Um, great looking trireme to me. Um, and like I said, not MDF, guys. This is wood. This is laser cut wood, like some of the terrain uh, manufacturers out there. Made in America. So I know you guys in the UK, you guys have more options when it comes to miniature gaming uh, terrain and, and miniatures in general. We don't here in the States. A lot of what we get is from the UK, unfortunately for us. Um, and, you know, the quality of it's all great and everything, but we have to pay for the shipping. And until recently, we're getting raped on conversion rates for currency. You know, the pound's down a lot, so... You know, the dollar is going a little bit further, but it's still trading higher uh, than than the dollar. Uh, but yeah, and, and I really want to support American companies that are doing this because if you don't support American companies, you're not incentivizing more American companies getting into the miniature wargaming arena. And this guy is American. So really happy. I haven't built the kits yet. Um, I need to build and paint them if I want them to be included with Marathon. But here they are. We're going to be definitely getting the airbrush out on this guy. That is going to happen. But I'm really excited for these kits. Um, they Just from, from pulling it out and looking at a couple of the sprues, it, it appears to be very high quality. Is any quality uh, laser cut terrain I've ever got from any other company, such as Sarissa. Um, oh, I can't remember who I bought all that World War II French Village from. <laughs> escaping my it's escaping my uh my brain here but yeah i mean it, it's just as high quality as sarissa or, or anything else out there and it's in america so if you guys are in america and he has an entire line of ships for the historical period he has viking ships he has these this trireme he has samurai ships uh you know or medieval japanese ships sorry he has a whole and he has steampunk stuff um, but, it, you know, I'm a historical gamer, but he has a lot of historical options there. I think he even has uh, medieval ships, too, for the European medieval period. So besides Vikings, um, like Tudor period and stuff, late medieval. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, just, to, you know, it's something we desperately need in America. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to keep them. If I ever get into Vikings, I'm going to keep them in mind. Uh, so that way I can, I can uh, support them more. So... That's those ships. Uh, we're gonna move on to the last bit here in just a second. Alrighty guys, we gotta zoom out a lot here. As you can see, I got a gaming mat from another American company, um, Cigar Box Battle Mats. So these are fleece, these are printed fleece. Um, I don't have it completely smoothed out, uh, but I ordered two of these. This is their Mediterranean Beach 6x4 plus size. And then I have a matching, um, I'll just, uh, what do I do with it? Then I have a matching one, you guys are gonna have to deal with the shaky cam here, that is uh, matching countryside. So it's just the, the green and brown fields there. So it's just a six by four. Because what we're gonna do is, we are gonna have a giant battlefield. So it's gonna be big guys. So essentially we're gonna be looking at an eight by 12 battle space holy diver i already sent i already sent holy diver the pictures he already knows how big they are as i spread them up in my family room and i had them overlapping um and they're big um, but they're very nice um they're expensive but they are nice and they are of high quality um the fleece is good the printing is good it took a while it took a month for me to get them or three weeks something like that and that's they don't have them just sitting around you know they make them to order you know, because they have about 30 different styles you can choose from. Um, and this one's going to be good for, for a lot of things. It's going to be good for, I mean, it's. I think it's supposed to be a, Sic a Sicilian beach in countryside. But, I mean, you can use it for Sicily, Greece, Turkey, the, a lot of the Levant. I mean, and, and I'm going to use it for World War II battles, too, for MTO stuff. Um, and North African stuff. Uh, so yeah, this thing's going to get a lot of use. Um, even Crusade stuff. So pretty cool. Probably going to be getting more battle mats for them as I need them. But these are the first two I've gotten from Cigar Box. Um, very high quality. 
They are pricey, but they are high quality. So I got two of those. We're going to be playing. I feel like the... Uh, I'm going to set up the tripod here and do some measuring while you guys listen to me banter here. Um, I feel like this is going to be good for a 400, 400 to 500 miniature game. My wife stole my tape measure, but I have another one. Um, I'm going to get an exact measurement here on what we're looking at. But yeah, uh, the battle's going to be huge, guys. So that's why... Yeah, it's six foot plus. Yep, six foot plus. So it's about six and a half feet, which is really good. Um, in case you all didn't know, I, I am in charge for terrain on the marathon battle. So that's why you, <laughs> I got the ships. Because the ships are going to be there. And then we're going to simulate the one mile run that the Athenians did. Um, and then the, the route to the beach where the Persians are just getting slaughtered. We're going to simulate that. Or maybe the Persians, maybe history is a fluke and the Persians win this time. We don't know. But we're going to recreate the conditions of the battle as much as we can. Um, and I was in charge of Marathon, so it was up to me to get all the terrain we needed for Marathon, which it was essentially these boats, the mats, and then I, we're going to use some tumbleweed as reeds. Um, but yeah, Holy Diver has Thermopylae, so he has to come up with the hot gates. That, that's his. Uh, that's kind of how we delineated that there. He's going to do the hot gates, and he's going to incorporate some of his skull pass scenery, and, and we'll, we'll make it work. And, it, and that battle will probably just be played on a 6x4, so not quite as crazy. We might actually use this mat somehow to be a part of it. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, he's going to do the terrain for the for the hot gates there uh, when we do that battle next, because after this one. So it's coming along, guys. I know we are supposed to be playing the game already, um, but it took, you know, like I said, it took three weeks for these mats to come in, um, and I'm behind on painting. So... Uh, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, me and Holy Diver, it's going to be something special. It's going to be a really good, unique battle report. Uh, and it's going to keep going. We're just going to keep rolling through history. So if you guys like big, big battles with lots of miniatures and big terrain and big tables, that, that's what we're doing. We're, 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 not, we're not doing this ain't a skirmish game. We're doing, you know, uh, rank and flank rules here we're using wab with um some of the wab forum appendiums um and yeah that's what we're doing guys so if you're if you're a fan of ancient medieval battles and you like big battles then this is going to be uh you're, you're going to enjoy these battle reports so really long-winded video but i had a lot to go over um the product i acquired for the battles through history so we're getting there. We're in the home stretch. I literally just need to paint 20 more miniatures and these two boats, these two triremes, and we're going to be set. So keep watching and keep on painting.